Welcome everyone to this new weekly 5-Minute Friday Spotlight, a special segment where we're going to engage with thought leaders and other successful people from around various fields. Our aim is to inspire, motivate, and provide valuable insights to help you grow both professionally and personally. Today, we're privileged to have a special guest, Liz Farr, who will share her unique journey, her experiences, and some wisdom with us. So let's dive in and start growing through our journey rather sure. than just going through it. Welcome to our conversation. Thank you. Welcome, Liz. Thanks for being one of our first guests on our new segment. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Fimo. Yeah. It's it's an honor to help you and, um, you know, it's a way to reach more people. Definitely. So Liz, if you can go and give us your 30-second elevator speech to get us started. Well, I am a CPA, but I don't practice as a CPA anymore. For the last five years, I've worked as a freelance writer. I've written everything from website copy to blog posts to case studies, white papers, email sequences, you name it. Uh, lately, I've been focusing on ghostwriting books for thought leaders in accounting. So I've worked on books for everything from controllers in industry to auditors to tax strategies. Oh, wow. It's quite a diverse background you have there. So I know you used to be yeah. healthcare too, right? Before you got into accounting. I my undergraduate degree was in biochemistry. Okay. And I worked in that field for about two years um before I decided that I really didn't like doing um animal research. Oh, okay. Then I worked on a database project. Um then I studied linguistics and eventually found my way back to accounting. Oh, wow. It's quite a diverse background and experiences. So yes. let me ask you question number one. So given your diverse mm -hmm. background and experiences, what's the most important lesson you've learned that's helped you grow both professionally and personally? The biggest thing that I've learned is the practice of forgiveness. You know, and forgiveness doesn't mean that you're a doormat that people can just walk all over you. It doesn't mean that you're letting the other person completely off the hook. It just means that for you going forward, you are setting down the burden of all that anger and grievance and the need to just carry that with you. Uh, it, it's like an athlete, you know, when a game isn't going well then the coach will tell the player well just shake it off and just forget about that it, it's like that right so this has helped me to heal from tragedies in my own life and also to deal with setbacks in the workplace to realize that whatever happened to me was not really my fault but it was another person deciding that whatever they did was the most appropriate thing for them to do at that moment. Yeah. It's helped me develop compassion. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's, that's a very important lesson there, forgiveness. I mean, like you said, you're, it's more about yourself than the other person when you're forgiving someone. Yes. It's a great lesson. Absolutely. Yeah. And there's also self-forgiveness in there, mm -hmm. too for forgiving yourself when you haven't done quite what you think you should have done mm, yeah awesome thanks for sharing that so of course question number two so you've navigated from animal research to cpa to writing so how have you navigated the challenges of transitioning careers and what advice would you give to someone that's considering similar changes of transitioning careers the first thing I, first bit of advice I would give someone is to do what I did, which is just follow your instincts. You know, you don't have to feel trapped simply because you put in a lot of time and effort and money into training for an occupation when you discover that it's really not quite what you want to do. The learning that you got from that experience will be with you forever. So don't be afraid to just completely do a pivot and leave behind 
huge chunks of learning and intellectual capital because it really will come back in some form. You will use all those experiences in your life somehow. That's very and, great. Yeah. And the other thing I would say is just to be patient with mm-hmm. yourself. Switching careers like I've done is challenging. Mm-hmm. It can be a little bit rugged in the middle, especially when you know, I don't want to do this anymore, but what what is it out here that's over here that I want to do? Mm-hmm. That can be very challenging. And, but and I think sometimes too, when someone's considering that, they might have financial obligations or family responsibilities and yes. that kind of stuff comes into play too. That does make it very challenging. Mm-hmm. Um, and so if you're planning to make a big shift like I did, then start thinking about it beforehand if you can and set aside some resources, some financial mm-hmm. resources. Yeah. And more great advice. Thanks, Liz. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. we'll move on to question number three now. So given your experience in both accounting and writing fields, what are some mm-hmm. key trends or changes that you foresee in the future? And then how can professionals prepare for these changes that are coming? The biggest change that everybody's talking about right now is is AI, mm-hmm. especially with chat GPT. And many people are afraid that this will take over our work or will put us out of a job, but it it won't. It will change what we do. It will free our brains from having to do the really difficult, the stuff that we don't like doing and give us a leg up to do the stuff that's more fun. Writers are often afraid that it will put them out of jobs, but if you've looked at the output of of uh, text written by Chat GPT is pretty terrible, mostly. Right. <laughs> yeah. And so, if if you're a good writer, then you can certainly surpass mm-hmm. that. You can take that as a starting point. But um, certainly, adding the human element will mm-hmm. always help. Yeah, it's very true. So, question number four now I have is: What motivates you in your work? And how do you uh, maintain this motivation during challenging or difficult times? Do we lose you there, Liz? There, oh. we're back again. Sorry. Okay. Let me uh, let me repeat question number four again. So, okay. what motivates you in your work, and how do you maintain this motivation during challenging or difficult times? What motivates me is that the work I do is trying to take the ideas that are trapped inside somebody's head Mm -hmm. and put them into something written so that other people can get those ideas and put them into their own head. So that motivates me because I'm spreading ideas around. I'm helping other people get their ideas out and that really motivates me Mm. um it also makes me feel good that i'm i'm doing just this tiny little bit to make accounting better for future generations Mm. than it was for me yeah um that's a very big motivator doing some meaningful work (laughs) Yeah, now my experience in public accounting was what I'd call uh, medium horrible. Mm. It wasn't <laughs> really, really awful, awful, terrible, horrible, like mm. Big Four or something. It was just kind of, yeah. you know, not good. Right. Yeah. All right. So, question number five now <clears throat> What is one piece of advice you would give to someone to help them grow and p- prosper in their professional and personal lives? One piece of advice I would give is to follow your curiosity. And that doesn't mean just scrolling endlessly on your phone. You know, don't don't do that. 
but maybe go to a library, a bookstore, and find something real. Mm -hmm. Um, Explore things outside of yourself and outside of accounting. Um, There is such a world out there beyond the tiny confines that we know a big world beyond the debits and the credits and the bank recs and the tax returns. That is some great advice. And I mean, reading for me has opened up so many doors and just gives you so many new ideas and helps you converse with other people too, because you get to chat about similar things and just a mm-hmm. great tool. So absolutely, Liz, thank you so much for joining me today and for sharing your invaluable insight. I'm sure everyone's going to find the takeaways from our conversation very helpful. And I appreciate your time and the knowledge that you've imparted. Again, thank you once again, and wish you all the best in your continued journey. Thank you, Liz. Thanks, Fimo. And I wish the best to you, too.